you are a young woman who thinks that you deserve a high value man. No, you don't. The truth is that unless you struggle best with a man on his way to the top, you are replaceable. No, what you should be doing is finding a good man who has integrity. You do not deserve a life of luxury unless you struggle bus with him to get there. Your game plan should be to attract the kind of man who will become the HVM that you want because you help him get there. And nice. you do that firstly by being the kind of bait for that catch. Mm. Find a good man and be good to him. And grow together. That is how to get the life that you want. Well said, and I wish more women would understand it. You don't ever, women never understand what type of men they're asking for. When you're asking for a man that's already built, well, he comes with his own uh, rules, standards, and preferences. He will not trust you, okay? That's just how it is. Because you weren't there at his low. You are there when he's at his high. That's, that's something women don't understand. So, I mean, men will see things differently. Men will act differently towards you. Okay? But no, they they, they, they assume, okay, he's going to be loyal. He's going to be this. Uh, he's not going to be controlling. He's not going to be whatever. That's, this is, that's, the, that's the fallacy of it. You don't ever understand the type of men you want. If you want, okay, a high value man, do it, look for the type of man in your early 20s. Look for a man that's ambitious, that is a go-getter, that has big dreams, but he, he works hard at it. And then get with him, hopefully marry him, and build that life with him, okay? And then when you're in your 30s, you potentially have that life, the life that you want. A man that's, because you were with him at his lows, a man that's moral, has integrity, um, th that's loyal, right? But because you built with him, now he's making the amount of money you would like. This is the thing. So women understand, okay? Oh, I'm going to focus on myself in my early 20s. And then, in my late 30s, find a high-value man. What? It's like you wasted years, and now you want a top percent man. A man that's already built. A man that's already struggled. Okay? A man that now he is highly desired. You want that man to be faithful to you. To be loyal to you. To be moral. To be not controlling. It's like... But this is that's why, right? A lot of women are struggling in the dating scene because they want that type of man, and but they're going about it the wrong way. This is the thing. I think feminism has lied to women. Women don't want to work hard. They don't, especially in, you know, uh, you know the career field. They don't want to have to work. They want the choice. This, women are very predictable. They want the choice to pick and choose what they want. Well, to accomplish as close to perfection as humanly possible, you have to do it the right way, okay? But no, women don't. Women want to do it their own way and then expect perfection. Ridiculous. People on the internet will find any reason to say that your man don't like you and that your relationship is miserable and you should leave him. You could be like, OMG, my man left his coffee cup in the sink this morning and it irritated me. They're going to be in the comments like, it's because he thinks you're his servant. He doesn't like you. He actually hates you. He's probably cheating on you with somebody that works at Starbucks. You could be like, I have to pay my rent this month because my man got hurt at work because he broke his leg and now he can't work, so I have to be the one to pay the rent, right? It's going to be like, he probably hurt his leg on purpose because you're a black woman and they don't think that you guys deserve to be provided for. He hates you and he's trying to make you leave him like my man don't like to kiss me when i got lip gloss on right now i know that so i might make a video right i might be like begging me a kiss fucking with him knowing he's not gonna want to kiss me with all this lip gloss on and he gonna be like mm -mm, right and then here go the people on the internet oh my god he hates you the silence is so loud girl you need to leave him he cannot stand you this is the thing right now women want perfection 
they want that fairy tale right now, right now, right away. No work, no work needed. This is what I talked about before where women don't want to struggle with you. And they it's their right. If they don't want to struggle with you, that's fine. But they also want the finished man. They want you to struggle on your own, level up, be the best man you can be, and then they'll come into your life much older. The women will come into your life much older, more ran through, right? More attitude, harder to deal with. That's when she thinks you, you will be ready for her and you'll get what you get. This is the thing with women, right? They don't want to, they don't want to be there for you when you're down. Also, they expect things to be perfect. It's like the thing is like, we're, I think a lot of the, one of the biggest things with the problem with dating or relationships nowadays is that we can't, there's no ride or die. We can't stand through the hard times. We can't work through the hard times. We can't. I mean, like at any point, right? If a woman's not feeling it, if they're if they're unhappy at that moment, that's it. The divorce. We're done. We're walking away. And it's like you cannot be happy twenty four seven every single minute. Okay, things cannot be perfect twenty four seven every single minute. But no, women nowadays they are so ruled by that by their emotions. They are so expectant, so entitled, thinking that every day should be happy. Uh, I should be happy. I should be whatever I want should be happening. And this is the downfall of, of relationships and marriages. And men are seeing this. And that's why they've been giving up on dating. Because of stuff like this. You turn those lights off. Which ones? The ones that are keeping me awake at night. Charlie, we went through this before, sweetheart. What? We went through this before. The rope lights are not in your window. Honey, I have to put pillows, pillows over my windows so I can sleep. The cops came and they looked at the rope lights. They said they're not shining in your window. But I'll do you this. I'll do you this. I will turn them off at 10 o'clock. Okay? Is that okay? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I got you. I don't mean to be a mean neighbor, and I want you as my neighbor. I got it, Charlie. All right? See, what I think with it is, Charlie, I think you just need to come over when you're lonely and talk and have some food and some water. How about that? Sorry. <laughs> and if I'm off and you ain't got nothing else to do, if you want to come on the patio, bring your bottle of wine, come chill with your boy, I got you. All right. I love you, Journey. I'm sorry. No, nah, don't worry about it, sweetheart. You good. This is going to be a long one, right? I get constantly um, comments saying, uh, stop talking about black people. Don't mind your own business. You're not, you're not part of the community. And... Um, so on and so on, right? This is a thing where I I work around and with black people. I my friends are most of my friends are black. Growing up, my friends were black. I live in black communities. I date black women, right? My kids are mixed, and it's just. And people say that, you know, you don't know the struggle, you don't see that. I don't know it personally, but I see it. I see it every day, okay? With the people I know, uh, the women I date, the, everything, right? And it's it. a lot of times, it breaks my heart. And it breaks my heart because of the divide. And yes, sometimes people see that, oh, you hate black women, you hate black women. It's not about hate. I don't, I don't really, I really don't hate black women, right? I actually love black women. Um... It's why I date black women, right? Because I find that their personality mesh with meshes with me pretty well. But that's besides the point. Is that this is the thing, right? This is the the kind of a, a thought, uh, uh, a stat that I don't I don't have the the data right now on me, but I I, I was I learned how I heard it. The back in nineteen fifties, sixties, and before that, black people were the highest married. Uh, demographic out there higher than uh, white people higher than Asians higher than whatever they were the highest married demographic and now they are the lowest it's just I, I was thinking correlation to it it's just that 
the divide, the destruction of the black community. And sometimes I believe it's like, it's a lot of things I've said, right? The the rise of baby mama culture, the rise of women, you know, being independent, no, don't need no man. Uh, the rise of um, women hating black men or viewing black men as inferior. And it's, sometimes it's sad because this is the thing where I said I have friends that are black. Black men, okay, and in my and I'm not dating them, so in my eyes, I see them as good black men, moral. Uh, they don't have kids. Um, they are respectful. They are gentlemen. They they make they have jobs, right? They're not they're not like high high value men, but you know they're good average men. But yet they're single because women will pass them over. They're not they're not like. You know, the tall black man or amazingly good looking or high value or whatever, whatever. Right. They're not charming. They're not like the most, um, you know, badass talker or players and stuff like that. They're not. But they get looked over. And this is a I hear this a lot with a lot of black men, good black men. Right. Because they don't fit that those narratives. Right. They don't fit that mold. They get looked over. And then you get the flip side is women becoming baby mamas. Women wanting men with money. Women looking down on geeky men or not noticing them. And it's just that, or then women complaining about the men that they do date, right? Are terrible men. But it's like, are they? Because I see good men out there. It's just that I see the destruction, the, the destruction of black communities. And it's like, why? Why? There shouldn't be. Right, because growing up, I was I thought black people were cool, right? And they were so open. Because one of the things why I didn't hang out with a lot of Asian people because I thought they were so cliquish, right? That they weren't open, uh, they didn't they didn't um, they weren't fine with anyone going into their cliques, right? Back in school, but black people were so inviting, right? They will welcome you, and that, that's the one thing I love too, right? They will welcome you with open arms. And I, I love that. I love that kind of, those kind of personalities. So that's why I think that, you know, when you hear the, all the, all the, the terrible things, okay? It's just, it's disheartening. And one of the things I feel like is the biggest factor that's missing is family. Black families. Or just, you know, People coming together, people loving on each other. And, you know, yes, I'm Asian, but, you know, in my eyes and, you know, with the people around me is that I, I'm, you know, these are my brothers and sisters. These are the women I love and these are the men that I care for. So this is probably won't get big. This will get viral. It's pretty long. You know, probably my haters won't watch this, but, you know, this is how I feel. So, yeah. And this is also something where I feel like that's a danger, right? Why can't we are we are in twenty twenty three, and racism, hatred towards others is so still so rampant, right? You know, and videos like this is it gives me back hope, right? Where we're not seeing color, we're just seeing fellow human beings, our brothers and sisters, our fellow human beings. So. This is the thing. I don't care if you're black. I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're Asian. I just, I want people to be happy and, you know, be good to each other. There's a patriarchy. Women created it. Because you just said you want a guy. My controversial opinion, women have created a lot of problems that they're dealing with. And subsequently, a lot of problems that men are dealing with. Just like what he said, right? Women have created the issues that they're complaining with, right? Hey, look at this. Women love the charmers. Women love men that are charming. Women love men that are tall, that make a lot of money, that's essentially good looking. Men that have a lot of options. So in turn, look at this. When most women like these top, t this top men, what do you think you're creating? You're creating men with narcissism, right? Who 
they become narcissistic, they have ego, because they know that women want them. And yet women continue to desire them. So you choose the top ten, these top percent men, these men that can command a lot of women, that can attract a lot of women, men that are charmer. Because this is the thing where women don't understand. I believe, in my own opinion, most men are not charming. Most men are awkward, shy, or reserved, or introverts. The ones that are charming, okay, that are amazing talkers to women, they became that through dealing with a lot of women, i.e. possibly having high body counts. They've had sex with a lot of women. They've dealt with a lot of women. Being charming is not really you're born with it, in my opinion. You develop that over time, you know, by interacting with a lot of women or in the lack interacting with a lot of people. So women desire these charming men. So you pretty much make uh, the, the dating market how it is. You love, women love men with high body counts. Men that have dealt with a lot of women. You don't love the shy men, the men that are awkward, that socially awkward, the introverts. You don't typically, right? Women in general don't typically go for those, the geekies, the nerds, the, the you know, the loners, they don't go for those type of men, right? And you think about this, why do the bad boys and players, the Chads and Tyrones, the Pookies and Ray Rays are so popular, have multiple kids, have multiple, you know, uh, women who cheat, constantly being able to cheat because there's always women that want them because women pretty much made these men desirable. Like I said, women created these, the, the dating landscape. You give certain type of men, right? A few select men the power. And I said, this is where, that's just like he said, women have created patriarchy because women desire this. Oh, I want a man to take care of me. Well, what type of man do you think that it's going to be like that? When most women want that type of man, he's going to be picky. He's going to probably, might be a cheater, right? He might be uh, very domineering. He might be like ordering women around. It's like, you sh women don't understand what they're asking for because what they ask for, you see it in the dating market, okay? You see that, you know, the cheaters, the players, the bad boys, all this stuff, those men are desirable because women have created that. It might be controversial, but like I said, I think women are the root of a lot of problems because of how they view the world, what they want. Because like I said, I, I believe, right, women have more power than anything. Men would do pretty much anything to get with women. So really, men will change the landscape to fit women's desire. You imagine this. If women say, no, I'm not going to have sex with you until marriage. I'm going to choose the men that uh, provide, you know, whatever. Okay? That he's morally, he's, he doesn't cheat, he doesn't that. Well, men will change up. But women don't. Right? Women don't do that. Women don't require marriage before sex. Women don't require um marriage before having a child women don't so in turn that's what's happening 